If you find yourself wanting to import data from Excel into your Access database, for example because somebody created their database in Excel or they exported their database into an Excel format and you want to import that into your Access database because maybe you want to generate a very detailed report, which you can't do in Excel, I'm going to show you how you can do that, well, import it. So here's my database and before I import the file, let's open up the files so we know what we're importing, take a look at it. And we can do that by minimizing my database down to the taskbar because on my desktop in my exercises folder, double click, is my Excel file. It's, well, look at that. I got my three letter prefix TBL, which you don't have to have when it comes to naming your Excel files. I did it because, hey, I was having fun. Double click to open it up and let's see what's inside. And there we go, right here. We've got our database and up at the top in the heading row, heading each column are the labels. And it's called the row header, the first row in Excel. And you can learn more about that in my Excel training video. But in any case, we got the labels. We got department code for this column. This is department name and so on. And you'll notice that when you're looking at the labels, it's being cut off. Well, for column F, if I want to be able to expand that column, just hover up and over to the right of F and, well, before the other column header, G, until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then you can click and drag to stretch it or double click really fast to do a best fit to fit the column to the longest text within the column, which is manufacturer ID. But hey, didn't we learn that in Access already, how to do best fits? Of course. Well, what you can do in Access, you can pretty much do in Excel at least when it comes to working with the data sheets. And in this case, Excel is called the spreadsheet. So here's our spreadsheet right here. And then down below, we have our query inventory, but we have an additional data worksheet. Click on it. And what do we got there? Pretty much nothing. It's my extra worksheet. And I did that because when we're importing this, I want to show you what it looks like when Access goes, um, you got an additional worksheet. Which worksheet contains the data that you want? It's on our query inventory worksheet. Okay, get it? Got it? Great. Let's come over here and close out of Excel and not save it. And let's go back down to the bottom, click on the corresponding button to our Access database so it can restore the window. Now to import that Excel file, you want to come up here, click on the external data tab, go to the import and link group, click on new data source. Where's our source? Is it from another database? And well, it doesn't see Excel as a database, just another file, fine. Let's go ahead and select Excel. And it says, okay, where is the address for this Excel file? Let's browse for it. And it's on the desktop in my exercises folder right there. Double click. And now it's pointing right to it. So next it says, I want you to specify how and where you want to store the data in the current database. You can import the data as a new table, or you can add the records from the Excel file into another table. And if you do that, you want to make sure that the labels you have in the Excel file match the same names or labels in the table in the Access database. Because um, if you got first name for the label in Excel, and then over in one of the tables that you're trying to import the records into, it just says first, Access is going to go, uh, I can't figure that out. So you want to make sure it's got the same labels, the same names for the fields. Or you can go ahead and link to the data source by creating a link table. So when you do that, you get a table over here with an arrow. That means that it's linked. And it's a one-way street. So when you update anything in Excel, it comes over here and automatically updates the table. You update the table that's linked to the Excel file, and it gets overwritten. So it's a one-way street. Well, let's keep it simple and import the data from the Excel file as a new table. Click okie dokie, opens up the import spreadsheet wizard in it. The wizard's going to ask us a bunch of questions, and based upon our answers, we're going to get what we want. Okay, first of all, you can show the worksheets or show the named ranges. Remember, my workbook had two worksheets, so with the query inventory selected, you can see the preview down below, but the additional data, eh, nothing. So let's go ahead and go back to the query inventory worksheet, or you can go ahead and show named ranges. If you don't know what a named range is, well, go ahead and watch my Excel training video on named ranges. In any case, we've got what we want here, so let's go ahead with it selected and click Next. And then it says, hey, I spy that you have labels for your fields here or your columns. How does it know? Because it's looking at the first row in your database, and it contains column headings. Well, it thinks it does. That's why it's got it checked, and it's right. So it's not part of the data. It's actually labeling the data down below. If you uncheck it, then it becomes part of the data so it can be sorted and mixed with the data. And the department code is not an actual number. 
it's a label. So let's go ahead and check this to separate it and say, okay, everybody at the top is a label or the first row in the database contains our labels or column headings. Go ahead and click next. And then you can specify the information about each of the fields you're importing, like, for example, manufacturer ID. Just go ahead and click on the label, selects the entire field or the column, and you can change the name. You can do manufacturer IDs, and it adds the S. I'm not going to do that, so you can, you know, make it more user-friendly for you if you're not liking the labels. And then as far as indexing goes, is it okay to have duplicates or not? Well, as far as duplicates go, see if this makes sense. We buy computers and some of the employees get the same manufactured computer, so from like Dell or HP, so we got to have duplicates, so yes, duplicates are okay. And then for the data type, well, it's got numbers in there. You could change it to short text because that accepts both not only text but also numbers and a mix. But if we just want to keep it strictly as number, we could go back to double or we could do long integer, but such a small number. We can just do integer, which is smaller than long integer. In any case, you can make your changes there and click Next when you're done. And then Microsoft recommends that you actually add a primary key, something that's going to uniquely identify each record in your table, a field that contains no duplicates. That's how it's going to uniquely identify each record. And so it already added the field for us by default. It says let access do it. And I'm like, mm, do I have a field in here that's going to contain no duplicates? Like maybe the asset tag? If it's not going to contain duplicates, then I can go ahead and choose that. So in any case, we can do that. We'll just do that here for laughs instead of having them assign it for us, manufacture ID. And you can always change this later. In fact, if you say no and you click finish, you can go to the design view. And as we learned in an earlier training video, assign a field as a primary key. And if you don't have a field to assign it, of course, you can add an additional field and assign that as your primary access key, choosing the auto number data type. So let's go ahead and go with no primary key. Click Next. And then what's the name of the table that you want to create that's going to import the records from this Excel file? Inventory? Well, it's not a query, so we'll delete that, the three-letter prefix, and do TBL. But I already have the name there, Table Inventory, so we'll just do Inventory B. Sound good? I think so. Click Finish. And then after you did all this work, do you want to go ahead and save the import steps? Because maybe later on somebody does some updates in the Excel file. They add another record. And you're like, oh, brother, I got to go through all these steps again to go ahead and update this table that I just imported. Well, no, just go ahead and save the steps. And you can save the name of this however you want. And it could be, well, inventory B. And then a description. In any case, go ahead and save it. And that's it. It imported it. There's inventory B. Double click. Did it do it? Good. We got a total of 24 records. Okay, let's close out of here. Go to the Exercises folder. Double click, open this up. How many records do we have here? Well, we have a total of 25 rows, but the first row is the label row, so we have 24. Checks out. But what if we come down here and we did some updates? There we go. Now we have a total of 25 records. Of course, i got to save it first and then close out. And we can minimize that down to the taskbar so I can see my database again. So come up here, external data tab, import and link group, and click on saved imports. It's right there. So with it selected, you can go ahead and click on run. It says it's going to overwrite the table with the Excel file here. You sure? Yes. Okay, it was successful. Okie dokie, close out. Let's go ahead and see, double click. How many records do we have? 24? No, we have 25. So docs in here somewhere. Docs right there. Record number 10 of 25. Cool. Let's go ahead and close out. And if you ever want to delete your saved import, click on it. And with it selected, you do get the delete button. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.